in Luke 16, 16, it says this, and the law and the prophets were until John, and since that time, the kingdom of God has been preached, and everybody is pressing into it. Biadzo, that's the, the Greek word, biadzo. It means to press in, to take by force. That's what it means right here, to press in, to take by force. Are you going to take by force the promise of God tonight? Or are you just going to be like, well, I don't deserve it. It's not for me. There's conditions not met in my life. You know, last week, Elizabeth and I were in Texas, and we went out to dinner with some friends, and they, they paid for our dinner, but we went to a really fancy steakhouse. And so I felt real guilty. I said, I can't order that steak. I said, that's $53. And he's like, order that steak. We came to a steakhouse. And I was like, but I can't because you're paying for it. And he goes, order the steak. So I told the person, I want that steak. And they brought it to me, and it was fantastic. <laughs> and I didn't pay for it. Okay? And that's how this is. You didn't pay for it. But you get it. And you don't feel like you're worthy of it. I didn't feel worthy of that steak. I'm like, it's $53. And he said, get it. And I got it. And it was fantastic. And we do that with God all the time. I don't deserve it because, you know, I haven't tithed enough or given enough or, or been loving enough. We disqualify ourselves. And Jesus never took into the account of the, per, the performance of the person he was praying for. He just delivered it and set them free. So as we're here tonight, we got to press in. I'll just preach a little bit. Uh, just If you want to stand, you can, or sit, you can. I'm just going to preach just a few of these things here. And we're going to expect to receive this. In uh, Matthew 11, 12, it's the same kind of thing where it says, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. So you see the two Greek words there of biadzo, which is it suffers violence. And then it goes on to say, and the violent take it by force, which is uh, herpazat, harpazadzo, or just the, the idea of, again, taking by force or to carry away. The idea, it's almost that's the word we use for the, the rapture, to take away or forcefully take. He's saying that if you're going to come to me, take what is yours. Take what is yours. And that's not selfish. If I said to all of you, which I'm not going to, this is just an example, but if I was going to give all of you a $100 bill tonight and I had it in my back pocket and I showed all of you proof, I got $100 bills for everybody. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> Jesus, make it happen. Come on, I got faith. <laughs> okay. And I had a $100 bill and I said, all of you get one tonight. Would you not come up and receive what was yours? And if you don't take it, that's on you, not me. Because the offer and the invitation has been made and provided. That someone provided that. Someone provided the $100 bills. The blood of Jesus has provided all that we need. The sozo, the salvation of God, that all aspects have been provided for us, body, soul, and spirit. How bad do we want it? We got to press in. But sometimes we act like this. Well, we're in a boxing match and you punch the person in the face and they don't fall down. So what do we do? We run away. <laughs> we give up. Oh, I didn't work. I'm not going to do it again. I prayed for a sick person. They didn't get healed. So I'm not doing it anymore because it didn't work. If you're in a fight and you throw one punch and you land it and they don't fall down, are you just going to stop? No, like, you can run. But if you're not very fast, Scott, you ain't going to get nowhere, are you, buddy? You're going to have to call a friend to come get you. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and so you need to, you keep throwing punches. But in a spiritual sense, we stop after one or two punches with the devil. And we say, and we give up. Ah, it ain't working. Remember the story of the disciples when they were praying for the person and Jesus on the Mount Transfiguration. And they were praying for the, the father's son and what wasn't working? The son was not what? Healed. He was not delivered. As a church, as churches, what do we do? We stop right there. And what do we do? We build a doctrine around that he didn't get healed. Therefore, it must not have been God's will. Jesus shows up, and what's Jesus do? He delivers him. He heals him. It was his will. They just couldn't get the job done. It wasn't on God. It was on them. We have to get to the point where we refuse to be denied. Take it 
by force. Press into it and receive from the Lord. That if I said, here's your $100 bill and you walk out without it, whose responsibility was it to come get it? Yours, not mine. That was yours. God has provided this for us. Uh, Luke 8. Thank you guys for staying up here. If you want, you can sit down or if you, whatever you want to do, but you can sit down. I'll keep going. Thanks. In the end, you can play a song. Thank you. I did like the background music, though, Chris. That was fantastic. Okay, I said Luke 8, did I? Okay, Matthew, Mark, Luke. So we're going to bounce around a few of the, the Gospels here. If you haven't got the theme, we're going to believe for healings tonight. We're going to believe for God to move in our midst tonight. So we're going to have our prophetic ministry. We're going to have our teams come up. And, but we're going to do it just a little different. Instead of just doing our, our usual, we're going to release a prophetic word, we're going to release a healing word. Now, just as a, as a way of instruction, some of the practical things here is that as we get into that, when we lay hands on to heal, we're going to lay hands on to heal. We're not praying for you. Do you understand that? Is that when Jesus laid hands on, his, on the people to be delivered, where does he pray to the Father to heal them? He doesn't. He releases what he has into the person to be delivered. So when we pray tonight, understand that it's going to be quick and it's going to be powerful. We might only say five words to you and then, and then you're going to go sit back down or you're going to test your body or stretch, move, do something that you couldn't do, see what you, you know, was in pain if it's not in pain. But we're not going to belabor the point and pray for five minutes for you. I think that actually causes God not to answer the prayer because that's not what Jesus did. Jesus didn't belabor it, right? Jesus would just speak a word. He says to the, to the man who is lowered through the, the roof, he says, what is it easier for me to do? Say that your sins are forgiven you or pick up your bed and walk. Do you think he made a few people mad in the crowd? All the Pharisees were mad. Like, who is this guy who can heal or you know, forgive sins on the earth? He said, I say, you know, the Son of Man can do both. Your sins are forgiven and pick up your, your mat and walk. What kind of prayer is that? Right? He didn't pray anything. He just spoke. Mark eleven twenty four, twenty two 24, 22 and 24. Speak to your mountain. Speak to it. Yes? To speak to it that don't pray about it. Don't pray to God about what needs to happen, speak to it. Now, I'll also say this. If you have to take like an Advil or something like that to, to curb you know, some of the pain or whatever it might be, no stones are thrown. If you have to curb some of the symptoms, if you have to go to a doctor, how many know that, that they're going to do the best they can to help you? Yeah, but they're just practicing, and so are we. When you go to a doctor, what do they call it? It's a practice. And they'll readily admit that they don't have all the answers. I'm not saying I have all the answers either. When you pray for someone and they don't get healed or delivered, I don't have all the answers. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to keep fighting. I'm going to keep pressing the envelope. I'm not going to give up the fight after one round and say, well, shucks, this whole healing thing, you know, it's hit or miss. This whole deliverance thing, you know, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. We cannot base our doctrine on our experiences. Amen. We just have to take the word of God and, says, and say that this is what it says. And then settle it in your heart that you're not moving from it. That it is what it is that by his stripes I am healed. That's a price he's paid, that, that $100 example. It's there. Take it by force and say, I'm taking that. That's for me. That's for my family. I'm not backing off of that. And Jesus didn't do conditions with people in order for them to receive their healing. He didn't look at that paralyzed man and say, you know, what, was, what, was, what sin, what'd you do last night? Were you being righteous last night? How about your offerings last week? Did he check his tithes and offerings account? No, he, he didn't do any of that. He just did what he did with him and said, pick up your mat and go, that you can go. But sometimes we qualify things, don't we? 
well, even for ourselves, well, I need to maybe do a little better, maybe that'll get God's attention. He says, if you come to me, that's the condition. Come to me. That's the condition. Come to me. So uh, we said Luke 8, uh, 40. So then uh, Jesus returned, uh, and the multitude welcomed him, for they were waiting for him. And behold, there was a man named Jairus, how do you say that word? Jairus. And uh, the ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at the feet of Jesus, and he begged him to come to the house, for his daughter was only 12 years of age and was dying. But when the multitudes had uh, thronged around him, now a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years, who had spent all of her livelihood on physicians, could not be healed by any way. So notice the daughter is of 12 years and is dying, and then she is, has an issue of 12 years. I think that's interesting. And they came behind and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her flow of blood had stopped. Notice, how, what was his type of prayer for her in this moment? <laughs> Nothing. He did not pray for her, and she received healing. How's that for your doctor and bag of fitting that in? He didn't even say anything to her. She just took it. She took it, that she received what was hers, that it was something that she just took. And then, then he even says, you know, who has touched me? And they all denied it, and then Peter's, Peter and those around him said, Master, you know, the multitude's throng and press you, and you say, who touched me? But he said, someone touched me, for I perceived power going out from me. And then she had came forth and, you know, had, you know, shared that she had been there. And I love verse 48. Daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. That's really been speaking to me lately. Of Be of good cheer. Tell your face that it's going to be okay. <laughs> I tell myself, it's going to be Okay. Like, I know I'm going through, but it's going to be okay. Be of good cheer. That if you're standing and waiting for a healing to take place, be of good cheer. That it has been finished. That it is finished. This woman pressed in. She took what was hers. She refused to be denied. Okay, so we'll, go, we'll jump back and forth between Matthew and Mark and Luke. So we'll jump back to uh, Matthew 9. So this is the, the same story here where the ruler has come to him in verse 18. So this is uh, Matthew 9, 18. So while he was speaking, behold, the ruler had come behind him and said, And my daughter had just died. Come and lay your hand on her and she will live. So Jesus arose and followed, and, and so did his disciples. Notice the heart of Jesus. Was he willing to go? Yes. Jesus is willing. He's not withholding. He is willing. So suddenly... Uh, in verse 20, this is the previous story we just read in Mark. The woman with the flow of the blood for 12 years came behind and touched the hem of his garment, for she had said to herself, if I only touch his garment, I will be made well. What was she saying? And who was she talking to? Herself. She was speaking to herself. She was building her faith up of all I need to do is get close enough to this Jesus. And so she gets there and... And she, um, she touches, and again, he says the thing of, Be of good cheer, daughter, your faith has made you well. Uh, and then going on, he went to the ruler's house. She is not dead. She picked her up. He picks her up by the hand, and she's alive. I love this in verse 27. So when Jesus departs from there, two blind men were following him, crying out and saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. The idea of crying out, do you think that was like a quiet scene, or do you think that was kind of like a... Maybe a chaotic scene a little bit. I would say somewhat chaotic. In the idea of they're crying out means it, didn't, it wasn't just like they cried out and like, ah, oh, he didn't hear us. All right, okay, we'll go home. You, is that what happened? It says they're crying out that they got louder and louder and louder and that they kept pressing in. That's my point I'm trying to make. They were refusing to be denied. So they keep crying out, Son of David, have mercy. And then he, and so when he had come to the house, the blind men came to him. So they're still following, still coming. And Jesus said, Do you believe that I'm able to do this? And they said to him, Yes, Lord. He touched their eyes. According to your faith, let it be done to you. How long do you think that prayer takes? According to your faith, let it be done to you. I don't know, what is that, five seconds or less? Less. That was a five-second or less prayer. 
Would you even call this a prayer? Now, is there a place that we need to petition and ask God? Yes, of course there is. You know, James 1, ask and, you know, if you, if you lack wisdom, ask God to give you wisdom. There's plenty of places that we're to ask you know, if you have not because you ask not. We get that. But when you're enforcing the will of God, you don't have to call in and ask permission to enforce it. A police officer who has the authority to pull you over doesn't have to call headquarters to find out from the chief if he can pull you over. <laughs> Which police officer has ever done that to you? None. And if they did, they probably got fired because the chief would be like, give me your badge and your gun. You are inept at what your job is. You have the authority invested in you. Do your job. As believers, we have the spirit of God in us that when we lay hands on the sick, they will what? They will recover. You got to believe that. You got to believe that your hands are just as anointed as the hands of Jesus. That he didn't have a specialer anointing, if that's a word, <laughs> specialer, a more special anointing. I'll do proper grammar for you. You know, more special anointing. It's the same Holy Spirit. But yet somehow we put Jesus here, the apostles here, and then us somewhere down here. We're on the same playing field. Why? Because of the Holy Spirit that we're able to do these things. And so he healed them, that he released them, and that and then they actually do what he says not to do, so you think their miracle would be reversed. Then he says to them, now, now their eyes were opened. He, it says he sternly warned them, saying, see that no one's, I like how he puts that to the blind guys, see that no one knows it. But when they departed, they spread the news about him in all the country. I'm pretty sure it'd be hard for them not to share things because people probably knew, like, they're blind, like, you know, they knew, so it's probably easy for it to spread, but you would think because Jesus sternly warned them not to do it, and they did it, he would maybe reverse their miracle because of disobedience. Yes? Were they disobedient? Yes. They were. They were disobedient, and yet Scripture doesn't say that their, their miracle was taken away from them. They pressed in and took what was theirs. What was theirs was promised to them. Therefore, it's not a selfish thing. Just like me in that stake, I felt guilty, but he promised it. He said, it's yours. And so I ordered that $53 steak, and I did not need A1. And it was medium rare, not medium well. You medium well people need help, okay? Okay, it still needs to be mooing when that comes to me on the plate. Ah, Jesus, I'm preaching. Yeah. Okay, we're going to a steakhouse after this. Okay, Mark 7. Yeah, okay, Mark 7, and then a few verses, and then we're going to practice healing tonight. Okay, Mark 7, 24. Okay, so here is the Seraphonician woman, uh, and she's asking in regards to her daughter that the demon would be casted out. And Jesus says to her in verse 27, Let the, the children be filled first, for it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. So again, she wasn't a Jew, so therefore God was not honoring the fact that she wasn't a Jew and that she was a Gentile. And yet she replies with, in verse 28, Yes, Lord, even the little dogs under the table uh, eat from the children's uh, crumbs. Verse 29, For then he said to her, For this saying, for this saying, go your way, the demon has gone out of your daughter. Question, what kind of prayer is that? That's not a prayer. That's a command. That's someone in authority who says something, not in the presence of the person, and it happens according to what they say. That's not a prayer. But many times we try to be spiritual, and then we try to put the, the blame on God when it doesn't happen. So we pray long prayers because we think we'll be heard for our much speaking. But Jesus said, you won't be heard for your much speaking. Yes? Again, is there a place to labor in prayer and, you know, and to maybe spend a night in prayer with God? Yes, but when you're in ministry mode, you don't see Jesus belaboring prayer. He just speaks and issues a command, and he speaks it with authority. You and I have that same spirit. We can do those things as, it, as he did here. And so you see that, and yeah, in verse 30, uh, the, the demon had gone out that very hour. Okay, last few verses here. We'll jump a little further to Mark 16, 16. 
this hopefully is a familiar passage. So then he says in, to them in verse 15, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized and saved and, and whoever does not believe will be condemned. Verse 17, these signs will follow those that believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents. They'll drink any deadly thing. By no means will it hurt or harm them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. That's your promise and my promise that when we do this, these things will happen. The condition is, will we believe and will we act? That's it. Do you believe it and will you act on it? That you believe that you can do these things, that through your hands you'll lay hands on the sick. Now, again, could you go to a doctor and have them help work through something? Yes, I'm not saying you can't go to a doctor. I'm not saying you can't take an Advil or whatever it is. But understand, Jesus is the healer. He's the healer. Can the doctors help with different things? Certainly they can. So I'm not saying that, but, and don't get discouraged if you have to go to a doctor for something, but you should at least give Jesus first touch. Give Jesus first touch. Press in and treat it like a fight. Treat it like a boxing match. I'm not giving up. Last verse that I'll share here is we'll go to the beginning of Mark, Mark chapter two, and then we'll, we'll go ahead and jump into some practice mode here. Uh, Mark two... I guess I already shared this example. I got ahead of myself, but it's okay. Uh, this is the, the story where they, they lowered down the lame man through the roof. And uh, verse 5, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to them, Son, your sins are forgiven you. Again, that's not a prayer, is it? No. It's an issue of a command. That he, he releases a command. And then... And then he sees that the, you know, the Pharisees and the scribes were upset about it. But immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit their reasoning thus within himself, he said to them, why do you reason about these things in your heart? Which is easier to say to the para paralytic, your sins are forgiven you, or arise and take up your bed and walk, what, uh, but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins? He said to them, arise and take up your bed and go to your house. You can either wait for Jesus to pass by you, or you can just come to him. Your choice. Yes? Come to him. And he's no respecter of persons. Settle in your heart that the word is true, and that despite experiences we've had, God, I'm taking you at your word, and that it is settled. Refuse to be denied. Amen? Okay. So let's do a little practice, if we will. And then what we, we can do is uh, we'll have the ministry teams, the prophetic teams. You can come up and kind of get in your, your areas. So the four teams that we have, if you would like to come up and go to where you normally go, because we're creatures of habits and we like to be comfortable in our same spot with our same team, we're going to go there. If you want to put just a little bit of music in the, in the background, and then I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate with someone and just, and just share how simple we're going to keep this. We're not going to overcomplicate this, amen? Amen.